Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is this fan timer board. So this is a fan delay board that's found in air handlers, so whether you have an air conditioning system or a heat pump system, or an air handler with electric strip heating, you may find a board like this inside, and I want to explain how it works and show what each of the terminals are for, and we're also going to do some testing over here on the relay. So I'm going to take you up for an up-close image of this. I want to first explain what this XFMR-R is, and that's your power input to the board. So that may be labeled as X-R, or it may even be labeled as a T, depending on the control board. And right here is your common, so your XFMR-C. You may have it say something like X-C, or it may say T again. But these are your power wires to the control board. This is your common one, and your common directly connects to this common here. So you could actually look on the back of the board, you can see that the connection connects right there. However, your X-R and your R are not directly connected. So if you see your X-R has to first go through this fuse. And so right here, it has to travel to the fuse and the fuse has to be intact. So you see that this is not blown, it is intact. And then from here, you have your power traveling to the R, so right there. So if you power this board with 24 volts and this fuse is intact, then you will have power ready right here on R and C. So right here, R gets wired to the thermostat, and if you're trying to power the thermostat without batteries, you're gonna to need to have C connected to the thermostat. You're also gonna have G connected to the thermostat. You notice there is no Y connection on this control board. There's only one power wire for the input uh, to initiate the blower motor to turn on, and that is the G terminal. So in your thermostat, anytime you turn fan on, R and G, what's gonna happen is they're gonna touch. And so where you wouldn't normally have power, 24 volt power to the board here, you're now going to have 24 volts here. And that's going to initiate your, your relay to close the normally open contacts. And it's going to do that after about seven seconds. And that's only when you have power to this G terminal. Now I'm going to do some testing to show you that. But you see this says NO and that says common. That means that right now they are open. And after you power the G and you wait seven seconds, those normally open contacts are going to close. Over here you see NC and common. Well, they are normally closed like this. And after seven seconds, after you power that G terminal, they're gonna open up. So they're no longer gonna be connected. I also wanna say that this M1 and M2, these are just spare terminals or park terminals. They're not connected to anything. So you see they're just a safe location to put your other speeds for your blower motor so they don't end up accidentally shorting against the ground. I'll be explaining speed up while we connect our, our transformer and hook up our multimeter but basically you're able to get past the delay, the seven second delay, you can either get past it fully or you can reduce it to a lower delay. Now also when you take power off the G terminal, you're gonna have a long delay before your, your contacts that are now closed are gonna open back up again. And it may be to the tune of about 65 seconds. And the reason for that is, say you're powering the, um, the air handler and you're running your electric strip heaters and the electric strip heaters are real hot, you don't wanna just turn the blower off immediately right when you take power off of the electric strip heaters, they're gonna be really, really hot. So you wanna to continue to run the blower after you disconnect your heat or, or maybe your heat pump's running or maybe your air conditioning's running. You know, you want your blower motor to run a little while longer afterwards. So now I wanna go ahead and hook up our transformer and we'll use our multimeter. Before I power this control board, I just wanna show you right here between common and NC, we have our multimeter reading, should be 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, we have right there, okay, 0, 0.0. Now we're gonna go from common to NO, and you see that we have OL, which is open loop, open line, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, but basically they are not connected. So it's just like this, they're not connected, and over here these two are connected. So as you can see, it's 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. When you measure XR and R, those are gonna have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance ac across them only when the fuse is intact. So you see we're reading 0 0.1 right now, and let's just pull this fuse out. Now it should read 
oh well, which it does. So the electrical circuit is open. And so between XC and C, that's always connected. So there's no fuse there or anything like that. So that should be 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance. And so that's how that works. Our board is now powered and I'm gonna measure for voltage between R and C. And you see that we're measuring 27.6 volts. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna jump from R to G to initiate our timer for a relay. We have our multimeter switched to resistance and we're reading OL and we also have a wire on our R and we're gonna put that right onto the G just like we're telling the thermostat to turn the fan on. So we're gonna wait a few seconds. It should be anywhere from say two seconds to seven seconds. It's already initiated and now we're closed. So you wanna make sure that you're very, very close to 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance across here, and if you had your wires attached, uh, a pitting of the contact or a problem with the contact would be seen by a voltage drop. The pitting of the contact in this instance, when we don't have the power wires attached, you would see that our resistance will be higher than where it is right now. So it may read one ohm or two ohms or maybe even 40 ohms, and that would indicate that those contacts are burnt out. Now right now, our NC should be open, so Let's just go ahead and pull that off and we're going to measure OL. Oh well. so, so that's correct. If you're using these alligator clips with a power on, you wanna make sure that they have rubber on them. But in this case, I'm just checking resistance values, so we're fine. And so right now I'm gonna take this G terminal. I'm gonna disconnect the G, just like the thermostat is no longer calling for the fan to turn on. The other thing is that anytime you turn air conditioning on, What's going to happen is R is going to touch Y and G all at the same time. So Y doesn't necessarily have to be on this board at all for your, for your outdoor unit to turn on and for air conditioning to turn on. Uh, what's going to happen is your fan is going to be turned on on its normal fan speed and it's going to be initiated by this right here. Now you see that we're going to be waiting for a long, long time before those contacts end up opening back up again. And for this board, it should be around 65 seconds or so. So there we go. And we're reading OL. Oh well. so, so that's good. The other thing that you want to do is just check the contacts. And I know we checked it earlier, but I just want to check this again. We should be reading very close to 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance because our board is not powered right now. And you see we're reading 0.1, okay, so 0.0. .0. So this contact right here is good, and we do know it opens up, so we know it's not welded together, and we also have a good resistance value over here after our seven second delay. So now that we addressed how this all works, and you, you wanna make sure that you're always getting 0.0, .0 if you get one ohm or, or say four ohms, five ohms, 40 ohms across here, when they should be closed, you know that this relay has burnt contacts, so that's usually the only thing that ends up occurring on these boards other than maybe a component burning out that you usually can see by visually inspecting. Now I wanna address this speed up terminal, so we're gonna show that. So right now we have our speed up terminal jumped over to our common and we just added a chair terminal, so if you don't have these in your truck, this is a very useful item for when you're having to have multiple wires on one specific terminal. Now, this other terminal would be used to go to your thermostat. In our case, we don't have a thermostat hooked up, so it's not necessarily needed, uh, but now we're gonna go from the RR to the G, and we're gonna see how long it takes for our normally open contacts to close. You see, it was very quick, so about a second, and we just disconnected that, so it shouldn't take very long for the contact to open back up, so it was only two or three seconds before that contact opened back up. So the speed up, if, it, if hooked to the C, ends up lowering the delay dramatically. Now, next we're gonna go from the speed up to the R terminal, and we're gonna see how quick that happens. Hopefully you can make out what I just did here, but I have our R terminal connected right over here to a chair on top of our speed up terminal. So technically our R and this wire are touching, and I'm just gonna go ahead and touch this right over to the G. And you can see what happens. It's immediate uh, switching over here on our relay. So I take my wire off and it becomes OL again, put it on. And so you can see that there is no time delay anymore. So that's how this board works. I want you to know that the relay right here is the most common part to fail on a control board. And it usually fails at the switch right here, or the contacts. 
and that's because you have a high amount of alternating current crossing the switch and powering the blower motor for the initial startup. As far as the, the, the relay itself, the relay is powered with direct current anytime that they're, the relay is soldered under the board. So there are two separate things. You're powering the relay with direct current, but you have alternating current crossing the contacts. So they're completely separate. And if you want to learn more about thermostat wiring or uh, thermostats in general, make sure you check out our website over at acservicetech.com. We have thermostat wiring diagrams. We have thermostat quizzes. And we also have our articles, our quick tips, our calculators, our podcast, and also our book. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at EEC Service Tech Channel.